Hi and welcome to this three-part tutorial series where I show you how to animate a voxel model. In the first video, I showed you how to set up a model that we imported from Magica Voxel so that it's ready to be rigged in Blender. So let's get started. Go to front orthographic view, bring up the add menu and then select armature. A single bone will appear. Drag it up to the model's torso. You need to be able to see the bones at all times. So go to the armature settings and under viewport display, check the in front box. Now go into edit mode and bring the bone up to the guy's neck. Make sure to lock the axis when you're moving your bones by pressing the equivalent axis button after you've pressed G to move the bone. Unfortunately, this key press cannot be displayed by the screencast keys, so I need to mention it to save you the frustration. Go to side view by pressing numpad 3 and pull the bone to the center of the torso. Go back to front view. Extrude one bone straight up for the neck and another one for the head. Press Shift A to add another bone. Rotate the new bone by 180 degrees on the Y axis and place it over the left thigh. Extrude one bone straight down and then another one at a 90 degree angle for the foot. Add another bone, place it over the upper arm and extrude two more for the forearm and the hand. Parent the upper arm bone and the thigh bone to the torso. Time to name our bones. This is a very important step that will cut our work in half. Name the torso, neck and head bones accordingly. For the bones on the left hand side of the model, be sure to add .l at the end of their name. Time to apply some inverse kinematics. Though not necessary, this step will make animating our model a lot easier. Go to top view by pressing numpad 7 and drag the elbow a little bit towards the back. Extrude two bones, one from the elbow and one from the wrist. Select both bones and press Alt P to clear their parents. Select each bone separately and uncheck Deform. Name the bones elbowik.l and handik.l respectively. Go to pose mode. Select handik.l and then shift select forearm.l. Press shift i and then to active bone. Under pole target, select armature and under bone, select elbowik.l. Set the chain length to 2. If the elbow isn't pointing at the elbow IK bone, adjust the pole angle accordingly. Usually a value of 90, minus 90 or 180 does the trick. Now let's do the same for the leg. First, move the knee joint slightly forward. Extrude two bones, one forward from the knee and one backward from the heel. Shift click both new bones, Alt P and clear parents. Select each both separately and uncheck deform. Name the bones kneeik.l and footik.l respectively. Go to pose mode. Select footik.l and then shift select shin.l. Press shift i and then to active bone. Under pole target, select armature and under bone, select kneeik.l. Set the chain length to 2. If the knee isn't pointing at the knee IK bone, adjust the pole angle as before. Go to edit mode. Select the foot IK bone and then shift select the foot bone. Press Ctrl P, keep offset. Back in pose mode, select the foot bone. Go to bone constraints and add the copy location constraint. Target armature. Bone shin.l. Now for the right side. Go into edit mode. Drag select all left hand side bones. Right click, symmetrize. Boom, you're done. Just make sure that the right hand side bones bend properly. If not, adjust their pole angles. Before applying the armature to our model, it would be a great idea to back it up. That way, you can skip all these annoying steps in case you need to rig a model with identical or similar analogies in the future. Now, select the armature in object mode, press Ctrl A, all transforms. First select the model and then the armature. In general, when you are parenting two objects together, remember to always select the child object first. It helps to memorize the phrase, children first. Press Ctrl P with automatic weights. Success! 
However, we are far from finished. As you can see, when we deform our model, these little squares appear. To get rid of them, right-click on your model in Object Mode and click on Shade Smooth. The squares are gone, but we also lost that distinctive voxel look. To get it back, add an Edge Split modifier. Unfortunately, we're still not done. As you can see, when we move the arm, a large part of the torso gets deformed as well. To fix this, we need to go through the most tedious part of this whole process – weight painting. While in Object Mode, select the armature and then the model. Go to Weight Paint Mode. Control and left-click the left upper arm bone. Go to Viewport Shading and select Wireframe View. Right-click anywhere in the workspace and set the weight to zero. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the circle over the parts that you don't want affected by that bone. Bear in mind that weight painting affects vertices, not the space in between them. So don't get frustrated if nothing happens when you click on a face. Just click over the vertices and you'll be done in no time. After you think you're done, press G and move the bone around a bit. This way, you'll spot any areas that you may have missed. Repeat the same process for the other arm and for the head. That's it, we're finally done. If you found this video useful, please consider LCSSing. In the next video, I'll show you how to create a walk cycle for your model. I will also show you how to make him move from point A to point B following a curve. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next video.